Israel is trying to face the issues in the second, in the 21st century. And, um, and I will present the I in Shido Medical Center. So my name is Igal Wolfischweich and I am a medical, a medical student, uh, not anymore, <laughs> a medical doctor. And uh, as a medical doctor, we have to learn the book. And it's very important to learn the book because you want to treat the patients. What's that mean? Oh. <laughs> you want to treat the patients safely. Because um, <coughs> if you don't do it, they will get harmed. So this is very important. However, as you all know, when we start to look at real life, the book is not enough. And I found myself as a doctor trying to treat the patient with the cataract surgery. Well, that's what we know. Exactly. As a, a injection into the eye with type of vaccine and steroids, that's what we know. But many, many, many others, we don't have any treatment. And for that purpose, what I did, I established a, res a research lab, which I can do clinical studies, but basic science studies, preclinical studies as well. So I'm going from bench to bed and backward, trying to understand how the specific patient can be improved. And this is something that you need to learn for decades until you go and implant it in implied on patients because you need to be safe. And because of that, I published papers and I published also and I invented patents because when you are very close to the patient, your your uh, science is more applicable than science in the university. And I become an after you do the patents, so you start to establish startups. I have right now two startups and I'm starting now another additional two and probably the fifth will come uh, shortly. And since I had an experience with clinical studies and preclinical studies, I become the chair of the Ethical and Regulation Committee in the American Research and Vision Organization, which is the largest organization in vision. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you my latest project, which is a real-time needle-free blood test. I'm sure all of you would like to have their blood count without sticking a needle in the hand. And, and especially in children. Because sometimes we need to stick the needle even more than once. Especially those children who have misfortune and get cancer and they treat it chemotherapy, their blood count can, could go down. So this is a really big need for us as doctors. But more than that, in the corona period, we need to isolate patients and we don't, need, we don't want to be in contact with them, so we will be exposed to the viruses and, and bacteria. So, this is, so what we can do with our system is try to uh, uh, use a remote care without being in close to the patient. And the remote care medicine is one of the issues that that sets the um, sync one. Sync one. Sync one um, century is uh, is really facing. So this this project actually started with the Corona period when I was trying to look for uh, a way to diagnose the patient through the camera on the eye. And, and what we were looking, we were looking at those little vessels. And in the little vessels, there are those little blood cells. Red blood cells, white blood cells. And what you can see if you have a very good camera, 
you can see those blood vessels running like little snakes. And, and this is actually a column, and you need to have a very sophisticated camera with hyperspectral, and you need a scientist like uh, what I had in the Tel Aviv University, there are physicists uh, who can help me and, and improve the vision of those images. And using um, artificial intelligence, we were able, in high accuracy, to identify the red and white blood counts. I'm sorry, the, the, there is a something about it. So, actually, we got a very good correlation between the red blood cells drawn from the hand and the red blood cells imaged by the picture. So as it close to zero, it means it is identical. So of course, in real life, you'd never get zero, but it's, but it's very close to zero. And more than that, since I have a good collaboration system with our uh, hemato-oncology in Shiba, we were testing those patients with leukemia. And we were able to show that we can easily differentiate between sick patients with leukemia and patients and, and normal subjects. And this is very important because you know it's not easy to bring those patients to the hospital. They are very vulnerable to uh, infectious infection. And in the last year, Israel wanted to send a second astronaut to space. This was Ethan Sliba, he's a pilot in the Air Force. And we, uh, we gathered and we established this system to send it into space. And it, it, it shows very good correlation with the blood test. And then we sent it to space and we were able to measure the blood test. This is the only system that you can measure blood test in space. Well, this is our group, AI person, the engineer for the camera, and I am here. So as we were talking, we were talking Yes. Any questions? I we have to answer. <coughs> At the end. At the end. So as we were talking, we were talking whether we were talking about one of the biggest issues that Shiva Medical Center Tel Shomer is facing. It is neural and generative disease. So the eye can be a, a, a window to the brain. Nobody listens? No, 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 Maybe you check your... <laughs> so why is that? Why the window can be a, a window to the brain? Because actually the, the eye is a protrusion of the brain. It grows during the embryo time from the brain like a ball outside. And, but however, you know that the eye needs to see, therefore it is transparent. And if it's transparent, we can see the blood vessels, we can see, we can even measure the layers of the, of the neurons. There are layers of neurons and we can, we can measure the thickness of them and we can know each one of them, whether it's functioning, uh, whether it's, it's thin or it is thin. <coughs> and one of the biggest problems in, uh, in neurodegeneration is Alzheimer's disease. It is a global epidemic and by the 2050 it will triple itself. However, there were more than 400 clinical studies and none of them successful. And why is that? It is because when we diagnose Alzheimer, it is probably too late. It's very difficult to diagnose Alzheimer 
with cognitive tests. <laughs> the cognitive tests are actually a questionnaire. You ask the patient how, how much he remembers, and if you don't sleep well, you get better, uh, I mean, worse res results, and if, if, you, if you're more concentrated, you get uh, better results. So it's very, very subjective. And in any case, whenever you do a clinical study and you have a subjective test, the placebo, which you compare, is a big issue. Because the subjective test is very, very influenced by placebo. So what we do need, we do need a test <coughs> that will identify those patients when they have a preclinical stage. Because when you have the clinical stage, you have you've lost many, many cells. And the brain, the eye, have around 50% reserve, meaning you can continue to lose cells, about 50%, and you will function okay. However, this is probably too late, as I explained. explained, explained. And therefore, we need a, a biomarker, a, a, a measurement that will tell us whether this patient is prone to produce Alzheimer's. So, during my clinical studies in treatments of macular and retinal disease, I also needed an objective test. Therefore, I um, invented a, a new system, which is, of course, non-invasive, to early diagnose retinal and macular disease, but we went into the brain as well. <coughs> it's actually based on our pupil response to light. When you shine a light, you stimulate the retina. The retina is actually like a film. If we have a camera, the eye is like a camera, and you stimulate the film, then you have a picture. And then the picture will move to the brain and automatically, in a reflex response, it will shrink the pupil. So the retina is composed of many layers, as I explained. Some of them are during, working during daytime, and some of them during night time. When we stimulate with the red color, we stimulate the daytime system, vision system. When we stimulate with the blue light, we stimulate the night system. While I was developing this system, this our, our technology, another system appeared which is the circadian rhythm, when we go to sleep and when we are awake. When we have a jet lag and we do, when we don't. And this system is not a vision system in terms of picture, but it is a big and we can stimulate it with a high intensity. So we have three systems that we can objective get the, um, the, the, the response. And, we, and more than that, we are stimulating the, the retina in different locations. Blue, in each one of the locations we stimulate with blue, with high intensity blue, and with red. So we get a response in all those three stimulus. <coughs> and we use artificial intelligence to identify people who doesn't have Alzheimer, but they are at high risk of Alzheimer before any other clinical symptoms occur. This is how we see the response of the pupil, and I'll show you in a moment. What you can see here is the pupil, and it shrinks. While we stimulated it here with the blue light, you see the response the wave response, the curve 
of the response of the pupil in each one of the locations and you automatically measure parameters in this response. This is the red response and the blue response. Again, again another, another. And we go ahead and move this stimulus in each one of the locations. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, the, I'm going to show it. Very good. Surprisingly, thank you. Surprisingly, we found two locations stimulated by the blue response here and here. Meaning here. Okay? And those two are the only ones from all this area that were significantly showing that we can identify with this system high risk Alzheimer. That's it. Thank you. I'll pay you, don't worry. <laughs> so this is an objective because we don't ask the patient anything. We ask the patient just to look straight ahead. The regular visuals, the regular visual field that we do in our clinic, we ask the patient to click while he sees the light here. And then he clicks again when the light is, slow, uh, is smaller and smaller and dimmer and dimmer. And then when he doesn't see it, he doesn't click. This is a very complicated task for people with cognitive issues. This is a very complicated task for children. This is a very complicated task when you're tired or when you're even having uh, any difficulties with attention deficit disorders. <coughs> so this is a simple test with a reliable uh, response. <coughs> we use it on those 300 subjects, around 300, and we got a very high accuracy. And not just for pre-Alzheimer, we got it for Parkinson, another brain, another brain degeneration. And one of the most important things that we need to look is traumatic brain injury. I don't know if you heard about the, uh, football, children that go and play football, they strike their head again and again, and they become, they have problems like traumatic, like traumatic brain injury. What we did, we used brain tumors, and we looked at those brain tumors because they have high, high intracranial pressure. And we showed that in those patients, we can also identify, even they don't have any problems on the visual path pathway, we showed significant and, and accuracy in the system. Ah, this is Ethiopia. I thought we're not talking about Ethiopia. No. <laughs> so I'll move forward. <laughs> Okay. So as I mentioned, I'm trying to look for treatment for patients who doesn't have any treatment. And one of the problems is creating models. Scientists are taking animal and and uh, doing a knockout in their gene and try to model it so we'll have a way to uh, use new drugs on those models and then move forward in humans. What we do here, we take the patient itself, we take a piece of skin from the patient and with our technology we can go backward and move these cells into embryo cells. It's called induced pluripotential cells. And then we move them forward into retinal cells, okay? Cells of the retina of the eye. And then, thank you. And then we can use drugs that are FDA approved. So I can give it immediately to the patient without much of a regulation. I need some regulation, but not much. So how we do select those drug that, that probably will, will help this patient. We first use it on a computer. You see, there are 
thousands and thousands of drugs, and we select them with the shape of the uh, of the of the of the molecule, and we find few candidates which are probably heats. And then we take the cells of the patient and put it on the cells of the patient. This is a real patient with a mutation doesn't have a, a treatment. It's a PRP31. He has problems in the retina. He has much less retinal cells as you see here because we wrote in the plate so they are dying more. And this is a healthy retina. And after we give him a treatment that we found in one of those treatments, it's actually uh, 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 antibiotics for prostata. It shows that the cells are healthy again. They are vivid. So we can go now and do some regulation about this and move it in with the IRV of IRV and move it to the patient. So this is a kind of a bench, bad bench type of medication, what we call precise medicine or um, personalized medicine. I think I finished this time. Thank you. <laughs>